Signals are a POSIX mechanism for interprocess communication. Sidekick responds to various signals. They're outlined in the link in the resources section, but we'll look at a couple of these and how they can best be used in deployment. Let's get started. We'll start off with the TTIN signal. So first, we'll introduce a bug into our worker. So here we're going to say while true, we're going to sleep a little bit, and we're going to output something to let us know that the bug is actually happening. And so this is going to run forever. Anytime we run an easy job or anything that's not super hard or hard, it's going to fail or going to run forever. So in one tab, we will execute the sidekick worker. So this will be the server. And in another tab, we'll execute IRB. And now we'll start an easy job. Okay. So now we're going to kill the IRB session and we're going to check out the workers. We can see it started a job. So we'll fire up the web admin to see what's happening in our sidekick installation. Okay, so it's running. There's a busy worker. We can look at it. And this guy's been going for a little while, right? Um, less than a minute ago, but he'll keep running forever. We know that. So we can grab the thread ID here. I'm going to copy it. And it'd be really nice if we could figure out precisely what Ruby code this stuck job is executing. Of course, Sidekick is awesome, so you can. So to do that, you send a TTIN signal. So we're going to pull this back up. I'm going to kill the web admin. And we will send a TTI, TTIN signal. So let's look for the Sidekick process. It is PID 15.392. So we will kill dash TTIN 15.392. And it will output stack traces. Now, most of these are going to be in select, and all that means, let me see here. So you can see it's in select. All that means is it's sitting waiting for, for work. If we look, though, we can find the thread ID that we're looking for. And if we look at this one, he's a little different. So he's in sleep, and we can see that he's actually in worker.rb line 25. So this is the line that's causing the problem, and this is exactly how you find the problem. So this is a pretty silly example, but you'll almost certainly eventually run into some stuck worker that you need to debug. And this is the proper way to go about figuring out what the problem is. You just send a TTIN signal and you look at the log. So that's, that's it with TTIN. Let's look at another signal. You can also send a USR1 signal and that will tell the server to stop accepting new jobs to work. So this is useful if you're in the middle of deployment, right? You're about to terminate the server. You'd like it to finish all the work it's doing and then you'll be able to terminate it once it's done doing work. So Typically, you'll send a USR1 signal at the beginning of a deployment, and you'll send it a term signal when you want it to terminate the actual worker. So we'll signal our server to stop doing work. So we will send a USR1. And from here, it's not going to accept any new jobs. So we can try to make a new job and see if it'll take it. So we will maybe do one that's not going to fail forever. We'll do a hard job. And we can see that we enqueued it but the worker didn't pick it up. And so that's exactly what we wanted. So separately, if you send a USR2 signal, the server will reopen any log files that have been rotated while using log rotate or something similar. If that matters to you, odds are pretty good that you don't need to see it demonstrated. Uh, it's just useful to know. Now, when you send the server a term signal, Sidekick will stop processing new jobs and terminate after a set amount of time, which is configured with a dash T flag when you start it up. It defaults to eight seconds. So let's go ahead and terminate our server. So we'll uh, get out of IRB and we will send a term signal. And so now it's going to wait for the workers to finish for a little bit and then it'll shut down. And you'll notice, so here it shut down, you'll notice that it pushed the job back to Redis. So this buggy job never finished and it knew it never finished so it pushed it back up. So when you start again it'll run it again and that's what you want and you need to think about this in terms of how you write your jobs. So let's talk about the pit file. So when you start Sidekick, you can specify a pit file location with a dash big P. So I'm going to put it in tilde temp sidekick.pid. And it'll start up. And now you can obviously look at it. And you have the process ID. And so if we were to grab for it, we'll find that it's 15.890. But now there's a file that has that pid. So that's useful if you're automating things. Now, Sidekick also ships with a control executable called Sidekick CTL for shutting it down. And so let's go ahead and have a look at it. So Sidekick 
and ctl dash dash help. So there's all the help you need. Um, we're going to tell it to stop our server. So we're going to stop and we'll give it the pit file. And it's a little more aggressive. So it will send a term signal and then if the term signal didn't actually kill the, the thing, uh, it'll ultimately send a kill dash nine. Now that's not actually happening here because our sidekick worker is actually terminating on its own, but it's a little more aggressive, just so you know. Anyway, today we had a brief overview of how Sidekick handles various Unix signals. They're vital to appropriate debugging and management of your Sidekick server. See you soon.